So we got a good debate going on here. We just watched the clip of Connor Lambert and the three-point barrage. And what is the point that you brought up, Shaka? Well, I just said, hey, Connor, you got to get a little bit better celebration than that after you make a three. But to his, to, in his defense, some of the stuff that, that uh, some of the guys in our program want him to do wouldn't necessarily be uh, <laughs> applicable to something, that, a game the kids watch. Do you have a go-to celebration, Connor? I don't. I don't. I'm usually pointing to a teammate or something, but uh, I've never really been, been big on celebrations because I want to act like I've been there before. But in a big game like that, you got to do something. And uh, I, I agree with Coach. i got to work on it. And uh, that's something I'll, I guess I'll work on in practice. Well, you did something big right off the bat, 21 seconds into the game. You hit that initial three-pointer. Coach talked about the importance of that shot. What do you think it did for you personally and for the guys around you? Uh, well, it, it's, it was big personally because, uh, I mean, you come off a game where you don't really, you're not hitting. Uh, and for the team, we, we weren't really hitting at TCU. So uh, to start off with that kind of shot and that kind of momentum, is, it's good for uh, not only me personally, but just to get the team going. And talk about you personally and your relationship here with Coach Smart. When did Coach win you over and how did he do that? Uh, well, I, I mean, I, I didn't watch their team a whole lot in the, in the past, but uh, once the whole kind of coaching thing got settled, uh, the first time when he came in here, he was just really personable with us, and he sat us down in the locker room, the players that were here in town, and he just, uh, that's when he kind of won me over, and when I was sitting at the, uh, at the press conference, uh, I kind of realized what kind of dude he was, and uh, that, right then I got really excited, and I was like ready for this year. Is he still the same guy all these months later? Oh, he still is. Yeah, he still, he still is. And, and that's what I really respect about him. And, and he's really held true to what, he, uh, what he's been saying this, uh, from, from day one. So. And this is why people respect your game. You look at the versatility and how Connor Lambert can beat the opposition in so many different ways. You see the points, 97 so far this season. That's six on the team. And then you look at reboundings, three-point shooting. Rebounds, I should say, correct English. Free throw percentage in minutes, all top three for this Texas team. Coach, you've got the clicker out. You're ready to break down the game of Connor Lambert with his help, of course. Let's start off with the offensive spacing, how Connor does that and why that's so important. Well, it's, he really spaces the floor for us because on our team, he's playing the power forward position. Uh, the four position most of the time, but he's a great shooter and he's a guy that can make decisions passing and handling the ball. So now we can put four shooters on the floor around either Prince Ebay or Shaq Clear or Cam when he comes back. So this is, uh, I, I believe it's that same play we watched earlier, first play of the game. He hits Isaiah on the wing and then he's cutting through to the corner. One of the good things about having a guy like Connor is when he cuts through the corner, if when the guards put it on the floor, if his man helps, uh, as George Yang is doing here, we really can make him pay. So, kind of talk about your mentality here on a play like this when you see the help occur. Well, can you go back a little bit to when I had the ball? We have a, uh, a number of different things we can do in, in our re reversal series, what we call it, and we just put in this deep cut to try to get Isaiah going downhill because uh, we knew we can drive them. And then Javon does a really good job heading downhill here uh, and then hitting me on the money. And then I know that's a shot that m uh, my teammates want me to take. And when it's a step in three like that, when my feet are set, uh, I have complete confidence taking that shot that my teammates want me to take. So um, we're fortunate uh, that to execute the first play, which is always big because uh, we're, in, we're in the timeout or we're after the uh, national anthem, we're sitting there. And we we want to execute the first play and try to get ahead of them. So you hit that shot against Niang, and now in this situation, he's playing Lambert tight. Yeah, here's one where, okay, they, the, the, they were really trying to push Isaiah to one side. So some of the pick and roll situations they were able to take us out of. But now, once the ball was reversed to Connor, there's denial here, there's denial there. So, so Connor's now on an island playing against George Niang, and, and what, he, what he does here is really smart. He kind of catches Niang uh, thinking about the ball going back to Isaiah, and he just rips and puts it on the floor. And then talk about this acrobatic finish here, Connor. <laughs> well, uh, some of the teammates, we were watching this yesterday, were making fun of me about it, but uh, I'm, very capable, I'm capable of it. Yeah, it's not very graceful, but uh, when you go back, we've got a shooter in the corner. This is why spacing is important. We've got a shooter in the corner right here, and then he, he always has to help on Javon. And then we got Prince. Uh, very capable of catching a lob, so uh, that really opens the driving lane. And and, and Niang probably thinks I'm just going to stand out there and try to shoot or pass, and uh, I, I was uh, able to catch him off guard there. 
Here's one more out of bounds play. Again, they really try to bottle Isaiah up and keep him on one side of the floor. This is called downing the pick and roll, and this is something that a lot of NBA teams do, and it's something that Iowa State does a pretty good job of. But what we're able to do because of Connor's shooting ability is if they want to down us, what that does is it puts Connor's man, in this case, number one, McKay, downhill from the play so we can actually back Connor up. And again, the spacing that you refer to, Lowell, now with this space here, it provides him with an opportunity to catch and shoot. So, you know, Connor, was yeah. this – talk to – you know, because I think this is something fans always probably wonder. Is this a call or is this a read? Is this just a play that you make? Well, Isaiah did a good job here. He, he realized there wasn't great spacing here, and then this part of the floor is open. Uh, can you go back a little bit? I was setting a screen for him to, to reset the screen to try to get him going uh, to the open side, but he was just telling me to pop, and then uh, I, I realized that my man was coming out with the low hand, so – uh, hand down, man down. You got any shooter knows that. So um, I, uh, he hit me on the money, and uh, I was able to make the shot. Now we get into rebounding, and I recall before the start of last season, you told me the part of your game you put the most work into was on the glass. Did a tremendous job a year ago, and we're seeing more of that this season, Jacob. Well, you know, rebounding is a huge part of of uh, what we want to do because obviously. If the first shot doesn't go in, as we watched earlier, if we can go get a second, a third, a fourth shot, that gives us the best chance to, to, to score the basketball. So Connor's going to be out on the floor a lot because of his three-point shooting ability, way out beyond the three-point line. But we love it when he runs in there. And, you know, here you see him using his 48-inch vertical jump <laughs> and skying in there and going to get it. And, you know, those are just extra possessions for us. And kind of talk about what your mentality is when the shot goes up. Well, my dear friend that we're missing this year is Jonathan Holmes, and he was a real spark for us on the offensive glass. And uh, I feel like that's what we're missing a little bit uh, from our wings. But uh, if we can get the wings to start crashing the glass like he did last year with Kendall and DeMarcus yep. and uh, eventually getting Tevin to start crashing the glass like that, uh, it, it would really help us. But um, I, it, in my first couple of years here, I would, I would get that rebound and probably take a bad shot, taking it back but um, to the goal. But then kicking it out and letting us restart uh, a different player, a new set, yep. or getting Isaiah attacking or an open three, like you said earlier, uh, offensive rebounds really lead to open threes. And... Um, my mind says it's to try to get in, uh, another possession uh, yep. because it's really tough to block someone out if they're starting under the goal and then someone's running in full speed from the, from the three-point line. And I'm not going to get every one, but if I go every time, my chances are pretty good getting some. No question. Here's another play from early in the year. You get a steal, get your hand on the basketball, and now we go the other way. And shot goes up. Again, I, I, I love, Lowe, what Connor just said. If he doesn't go for it, then there's no chance he gets it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If he goes after it, he's got good size, he's got good instincts, pretty good chance he gets it. Now, it's not guaranteed, but we want him to go every time. And here he does a good job, again, of keeping the ball alive and saving it inbounds. Another graceful move right there. Yeah, well, that's good body <laughs> control. I mean, you could have easily fallen out of bounds. I think most of the people around here would do exactly that, but Ball that's the difference between you. Body. Yeah, exactly. Hustle plays, and throughout these other clips, we've seen a lot of those examples, but here really focusing on just busting your tail. And in this first example, great example of getting the block here against Iowa State. Yeah, talk about this here, Connor. You're on defense. You're guarding the Yang, so you've got to give him a lot of attention, but... Then what did you see here when, when this drive occurred? Let me see. Well, uh, I'm, uh, to be honest, I'm a little late. Uh, I was guarding Niang, so uh, my mindset was try not to let him get the ball, try to face guard him a little bit, but you got to remain in some principles. Kendall makes a good job on the, on the ball. Uh, he does a good job on the ball, and I was fortunate to come over and, and get that. And uh, Kendall was just trying really hard, but usually you don't want to save it under the, your opponent's basket for an easy putback, but uh, we were able to catch a break here and uh, get, I get out in transition. But That was close. It was close. Yeah, it was, that was close. really close. And, uh, it's tough to eat that sometimes and, and just take that, uh, take it out. But What's it, your mentality here, way. Connor? Talk, talk about, you know, we're at the foul line, Prince is shooting, and what are you, what are you thinking right here when you're lined up? 
Well, the refs are always telling us to not push in and everything, which I'm not, I'm not really the type to try to push anyone underneath. But uh, like I said earlier, John Holmes, I really learned a lot from him, uh, going against him every day in practice and seeing what he did at the free throw line. Uh, this is a chance to get easy buckets uh, and easy uh, extra possessions for your team. And these are some winning plays that, uh, and I love it when I'm in there with DeMarcus because I know he's going to be going for it full speed. So uh, I'm extra on edge because I know someone's in there that, that's, that wants to get it with me. So uh, whenever we, we, we're in there together, we look at each other and we kind of make eye contact. We, we know we're going to get this. And Prince isn't the best free throw shooter of all time, even though at practice he had like eight in a row today. So uh, if we can get some carry over there, that'd be great. <laughs> and unlike your good buddy, Jonathan Holmes, you were able to do that without losing your teeth. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was fortunate. I got a mouthpiece, though. Congratulations. Connor Lambert.